Hi guys. It is a lovely early winter 2020 sunset here in paradise. Uh, I guess I can say this is the view from the hip camp, from the Crazy Crane hip camp here in an undisclosed location on the planet. And uh, we're already having visitors come down from the tribe. So come down and see us at Crazy Crane Campground on Hip Camp. And uh, stay a couple of days and nights. Uh, so tomorrow that I hear, today is Tuesday, December 22nd, 2020. Tomorrow, the high is 76 tomorrow afternoon. The low tomorrow night is 33. They're talking about it dropping 43 degrees in a few hours tomorrow to usher in a, uh, a miserable... Uh... Oh, wait a minute. I'm sorry. That's Christmas Eve. 76 is the high. 33 is the low. Uh, so I'm going to enjoy one more beautiful day before maybe a white Christmas. Uh, oh yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles, and uh, <clears throat> you know, with all of my talk about environmental destruction and all this, I'm uh, sometimes a couple of you occasionally remind me why don't I ever talk about the impending World War III nuclear war, so on and so forth on this channel. So I'm gonna make up for that little lapse in the collapse chronicling here and we're going to look at two stories now i have been saying for years my money on the next world war three is going to be from the south china sea is where i am putting my my money <clears throat> for world war three erupting in the south china sea although there's always the good old uh, Gulf, uh, you know, over there in the Mideast. So we're going to uh, see what is happening as we get to ready to celebrate the birthday of the Prince of Peace. So let's go over to, uh, to China today, right here from the mainstream media, to see what's happening on almost Christmas Eve. China expels U.S. ship from disputed waters in fresh escalation in South China Sea. China on Tuesday claimed its military had, quote, expelled a U.S. Navy destroyer after it, quote, trespassed into Chinese territorial waters uh, close to the Spratly Islands in the South China Sea, and a fresh escalation of tensions between Washington and Beijing over the South China Sea. The statement by Senior Colonel Tian Junli, spokesman for the People's Liberation Southern Command, came shortly after the U.S. Navy announced the USS John McCain had asserted its, quote, navigational rights and freedoms in the disputed seas near the islands, what the U.S. says is, quote, consistent with international law. The latest incident occurred at Shandong. The, the latest incident occurred as Shandong, China's second aircraft carrier, was reported to be conducting drills in the region after sailing through the sensitive Taiwan Strait on Sunday. The Chinese government, yes, the Chinese government, which, you know, is about as trustworthy as the U.S. or the Russian or the North Korean or any other government, you know, that government, the Chinese government claims sovereignty over most of the South China Sea, directly disputing the territorial claims of reefs, islands, and waters by its smaller regional neighbors. The Philippines, Malaysia, Vietnam, Brunei, and Taiwan all 
have laid claims to the Spratleys. This year, Beijing has been demonstrating its assertiveness over the energy-rich waters, prompting the U.S. to denounce its, quote, bullying behavior there and step up its own freedom of navigation operations. In July, Secretary of State Mike Pompeo declared that Washington will consider Beijing's pursuit of resources, can you say oil and gas, and now all of this stuff on the bottom of the ocean, these rare earth minerals and all the rest of it, Washington will consider Beijing's pursuit of resources in the South China Sea is illegal. Experts say the increased military presence from both sides, sides has raised the risk of a clash, either intentional or accidental. On Saturday, the U.S. Navy broke its own record for the number of times it has sent a warship through the Taiwan Strait in a single year with the guided missile destroyer USS Mustin making the 13th transit through the 110 mile waterway that separates China from Taiwan. The Chinese Communist Party claims to own Taiwan also, even though it has never ruled there and has threatened to invade it if the island refuses to be peacefully annexed, the U.S. has strong informal ties with Taiwan's democratically elected government and is, the U.S. is obviously Taiwan's biggest arms supplier. Meanwhile, the USS John McCain last week was practicing anti-submarine warfare with France's nuclear-powered submarine, the FS Emerald, and Japan's helicopter destroyer, the JS Hayuga, in the Philippine Sea. So now we have, uh, you know, the US and France and Japan uh, teaming up together to form their own little alliance. This sounds like the that uh, reality show Survivor is what it's sounding like to me. <clears throat> In a statement about its Spratly's Island voyage, the U.S. Navy said China that China's quote unlawful and sweeping maritime claims pose a serious threat to the freedom of the seas, including the freedoms of navigation and overflight, free trade, and unimpeded commerce, close quote, for other nations in the region. An estimated $5 trillion of international trade passes through the South China Sea every year, adding to concerns about China's control over its waters and raising the possibility that it could use its access as a means of economic coercion. Now guys, I have always felt that this freedom of navigation is a bunch of crap. It, it, you know, it is their excuse, but I don't know. Uh, I'm actually softening on that, that, um, that the freedom of navigation is part of, is probably a bigger part, but let's get to finally get to what this story is all about and it is about oil wars. It is about the unfolding resource wars going on on this planet, which we finally, the mainstream media, is going to mention here towards the very bottom of this article. Beijing is also keen to tap into the huge oil and gas reserves 
that are believed to lie beneath the China Sea's seabed. This is 90% of the story. It's all about the oil. As Gerald Salente was saying, if there was broccoli at the bottom of the China Sea and not oil and gas and rare earth metals, there would be no U.S. Navy destroyer uh, going back and forth protecting the broccoli. <clears throat> Earlier this year, uh, China earned a stinging rebuke from Vietnam <clears throat> over its suspected, meaning China's suspected, oil surveys in the area and by creating two administrative units on the Paracel and Spratly Islands, China has denied any wrongdoing in its warning on Tuesday. The government accused the U.S. of under... the Chinese government accused the U.S. government of undermining the peace and stability of the region. Of course, that is a true statement, but of course, you know, let's talk about the pot calling the kettle black, quoting Colonel Tian, quote, such actions by the U.S have seriously violated China's sovereignty and security and severely undermined peace and stability in the South China Sea. So that's how things are looking as World War III is ramping up at the uh, end of 2020. Uh, and, and I am going to stay by my prediction, which I've been making, what now, for seven or eight years, that the South China Sea will be the birthplace of World War III. But, of course, don't forget the Middle East, you know, the old standby uh, over that part of the country, which is essentially the same story we have been hearing since the Prince of Peace was born 2000 and. Uh, 20 years ago. So let's take a quick look, just in, just in case you, you, you think the only little spot going on in the ocean to be thinking about uh, on Christmas Day is the South China Sea. Let's don't forget the that other part of the world. This is from Business Insider. The U.S. Navy appears to be sending Iran a message with a submarine packed with missiles. There you go. The guided missiles uh, submarine USS Georgia sailed through the Strait of Hormuz into the Persian Gulf on Monday, and the U.S. Navy took the very unusual step of making sure everyone knows it is there. You know, usually these are very in the dark of night, secret operations, but uh, they are just making a big PR uh, event out of this latest, uh, y you know, just stirring up shit with Iran. Just blatantly poking the rattlesnake over there. Uh, the submarine was accompanied by the guided missile cruisers USS Port Royal and, ironically enough, the USS Philippine Sea, the Navy said in a statement, uh, Monday's statement on, on USS Georgia's activities marks the first time since 2012 that the Navy has announced the presence of a guided missile submarine in the Persian Gulf and the statement emphasized the submarine's firepower. Yes, missile submarines like the Georgia are armed with more conventional combat, combat firepower than any other comparable naval vessel these subs carry 154 Tomahawk land attack cruise missiles, subsonic missiles used for long-range strikes, 
deep within enemy territory. Uh, the submarines have 22 missile tubes with seven missiles in each one of them, and each of those missiles has a range of about 1,000 miles, giving these boats a pretty substantial combat radius. The cruisers that sailed with the submarine carry a lot of firepower as well. Do you think so? The submarines can also support up to 66 special operations troops with the addition such as an advanced seal delivery system. Yes. Uh, and in the photo, you can see that the submarine that's over there right now, as far as I know, has one of these uh, places that, ha that can house 66 Navy SEALs. Uh, a Navy official said that the deployment of the USS Georgia to the Persian Gulf was not was not a direct response to any recent event, but was, quote, long planned ahead of the anniversary of the assassination of Major General Qasim Soleimani, former head of Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps. Uh, Soleimani's death in a U.S. drone strike in early January nearly dragged the U.S. and Iran into armed conflict as it led Iran to launch a missile strike against U.S. and coalition forces in Iraq. Um, anyway, this goes... Uh, just getting to the bottom. The U.S. Navy said in its statement Monday that the USS Georgia's, quote, presence, the Georgia's presence demonstrates the United States' commitment to regional partners and maritime security with a full spectrum of capabilities to remain ready to defend against any threat at any time, close quote. I don't know about you guys, but I'm certainly going to sleep a lot more peacefully tonight knowing that this uh, submarine is over there uh, remaining ready to defend against any threat at any time. So let's wish Merry Christmas to all of those Navy sailors in far-flung corners of the planet. Wish them a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year 2021. But with that, I'm going to wrap up uh, today's Chronicle of the Collapse and highly suggest you get out there and enjoy your full spectrum of capabilities while you still can because this whole thing could blow any day and I'm not even going to get into all of the articles uh, going around today freaking out about what Donald Trump is going to pull out of his hat uh, in the final month of his temper tantrum as the world becomes a powder keg. Uh, anyway, I'm going to go freshen my drink. Come see us at uh, Crazy Crane Campground Hip Camp while you still can. Bye, guys.